Mikey! Huh? Yes? What are we doing today? Uh, I don't know. I think it's some kind of trivia show? Yes. I'm gonna ask you some questions. Three part questions. In each question, there will be two Pokemon facts and one lie. You have to find the imposter and tell me which one's the liar. Do you think you can do that? Oh, certainly. I've never been more confident of anything in my life. Do you watch a lot of fact videos on YouTube or anything like that? Periodically. Over my many wizened years, I have uh, dabbled in some Pokemon fact videos on occasion. Who is your favorite YouTuber that makes Pokemon fact videos? Oh, well, it's obviously Papa C. Well, who else would it be? That's the correct answer. That was the first actual question, so you already got one point. Excellent. I think you're going to be good at this, because out of every Pokemon YouTuber out there, I think you're one of the very few people who might know more about me than Pokemon. More about Pokemon than me. <laughs> you definitely do not know more about me than I do. That would be weird. That would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> but Pokemon, you might. Are you ready for the first question? I am. So here we go. Question one. A. Pikachu was intended to be a tiger and have big breasts for its western release. What? B. Yeah, you heard me right. Bonsly is tied for having the fewest number of Pokemon cards in the English Pokemon trading card game alongside Munchlax. And then C. The Pokemon Ditto is actually a ninja. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting off hot. Wait. You said one is a lie? Only one of them's a lie. Oh. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the Bonsly and Munchlax card one sounds legit. I fully believe that those baby Pokemon would have not very many cards. The breasts, though? And then Ditto being a ninja? I feel like the Ditto being a ninja is some kind of wordplay here. I, I cannot believe under any circumstances that Pikachu was originally designed with breasts. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. That's not exactly what I said. What did you say? Pikachu was intended to be a tiger and have big breasts for its Western release, not its not its original Japanese release. Oh, so they were gonna revamp it for the Western release? Is that is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Okay, well now it becomes more believable because they think <laughs> they definitely think us Americans are dumb. When you say Ditto's a ninja. Are you, are you able to give any more information besides that? Okay, how about I give you a hint for all three? Okay. So A, about Pikachu being a tiger, is more related to the anime. B is obviously relating to the card game, okay. uh, with the Bonsai card. And C, about Ditto being a ninja, is relating to the manga. If it's related to the manga, I fully believe it could be some goofy ninja thing. The manga's insane. They cut Pokemon in half in that. So yes. I'm going with the tiger one. I, I'm sticking with that. The the tiger with big breasts is the lie. That is incorrect, Mikey. No! <laughs> B is actually incorrect. It is Bonsly and Mantike that are tied for the fewest okay. English well, that, releases that, in the I, Pokemon that, trading that's, card a, game. that's a setup. <laughs> <laughs> that was a setup. I started off with the with the worst one or the best one, depending on how you look at it. Okay, I need explanations for the other two. Do you have any photos of the 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 beta Western Pikachu supposedly? No, I don't have photos. It's just a bunch of random information that I've seen out there. What is the Ditto being a ninja thing? There is a manga that roughly translates to Pokemon Magical Journey about a bunch of girls who have names after nuts who try to become ninjas. And Ditto is a Master Sensei Ninja. Okay, this one I think you're gonna do better at. A. Castiform's forms did not receive their own shiny variations until Generation 8. B. The base cast form is officially categorized as being the color gray. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but each Pokemon has a certain color based off the Pokedex. Oh yeah, I've done a video on that. Okay. There's some ridiculous ones like Milotic is pink. Yes, a lot of ridiculous ones. And C. Kecleons were experimented on while cast form was being made due to Kecleon's proximity to the Weather Institute in Kanto as well as their abilities to change types. I know the shiny one is real. I know that's the truth. I've I've talked about that in many videos. My whole hail yeah phrase came from when the hail form got its shiny in Pokemon Home and it was blue and yellow. 
uh, by channel colors. The other two, cast forms, you said cast forms color is gray? Is officially categorized as the color gray. Okay, I think that's the lie. And here's my logic. The Kecleon thing is definitely not like any official lore in the mainline games, but that 100% sounds like something they'd pull in the manga, like in the Pokemon Adventures manga, which I have not read, but I know they do some crazy stuff in that. The gray, I think, is the lie because it sounds normal, but I think instead it's got to be denoted as, like, white. Um, so I am saying the cast form is gray. That is the lie. Cast form used to be categorized as gray, but it was changed to white. Aha! Generation 6. I was right! No, you were not right. The, the fake one is C. What? Archaeops is Pokedex number 567. Archaeops' base stat total is also 567. In the Dewey Decimal System, are you familiar with that? Um, I know that it is a system for organizing library books, but I don't remember how it works. Yes. So in the Dewey Decimal System, the number 567.9 is also the number for feathered dinosaurs. Huh. B. It is technically possible to visit Mauville City in a Generation 2 Pokemon game. Main series Pokemon game, to make it more specific. Or C. The NPC who famously says shorts are comfy and easy to wear is named Mikey. At first, I wanted to say the last one is the lie. Because the first character, first character to say that is a youngster in red and blue. And the, the trainers like that, so like not the important trainers like the gym leaders or the elite four or the rival, those trainers don't have names at all. That trainer also appears in Fire Red and Leaf Green, though. But that, yeah, exactly. That's that's why I'm like, oh, well, they could have changed. They when they a gave him a name, they could have added Mikey. So that's what is making me get hung up on that. The Archaeops one is really interesting. I don't know its exact base stat total, but I do know it's like in the like 550 to 580 range. So that sounds like it could be legitimate. If only I knew the Dewey Decimal System, <laughs> it could be like I could eliminate that possibility. 567 as its Pokedex number, I think is in the right range. I feel like you do something dirty and make it so it's like, that's all true, but it's actually 568 or 569. Nice. You know, for and just swapped out all the numbers throughout the whole thing, which would be very rude. <laughs> Remind me what B was. It is technically possible to visit Mauville City in a Generation 2 Pokemon game. Main series Pokemon game to make it more specific. Okay, so that would be like through a glitch. You know, like... No glitches. I'll, I'll give you another hint. No glitches. No glitches? Well, now that sounds... Well, that sounds impossible. <laughs> but you know... <laughs> but like the fact that you've like... Like it sounds so obviously impossible, which is making me think that it might be possible. Like I would, I could believe a city design that ended up becoming Mauville City could be buried in the code and someone data mining could find it and you could like use like an action replay to like walk through walls or something and find it. But the fact that you said no glitches, I feel like I have to say that one. I, I, I don't see any way for you to get to Mauville City without doing some kind of glitch. So that's the one I'm saying is the lie. Are you sure? I am. I don't know what else to do here. <laughs> do you speak any French? Uh, no. Like, five words, maybe. In the French versions of Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, Mauville, sorry, Violet City is called Mauville City. I hate you so much. <laughs> so technically, if you're playing a French copy, uh, you do go to Mauville City. Uh, so you're over three. How you, how you feeling? Uh, why did I agree to do this? You got you got seven more. You can still go seven for ten. That's respectable. That's uh, fine. Okay, which one's the lie then? Oh, the shorts guy is named Ben, not Mikey. All right, you ready for the next one? Am I? Am I? <laughs> yes, just just do it. <laughs> okay. A. In the game files for Pokemon Emerald, which I believe is your favorite Pokemon game, right? Uh, Gen... I don't know if I have a favorite Pokemon game. Gen 3 is the one I'm the most nostalgic for. Okay, fair enough. So you know a lot about Pokemon Emerald. Yeah. 
Okay, let me continue the question. In the game files for Pokemon Emerald, there exists a sprite for Gardenia, the second gym leader in the Sinnoh region, next to the sprite for the Battle Frontier Brains. This implies that she was intended to be a Frontier Brain in Emerald version, but was scrapped and later reused as a gym leader in the next games. B. Pokemon games have never been released in the Korean language. C. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, the Joy-Cons that appear in your bedroom at the start of the game can only be red and blue, despite what Joy-Cons you have on your actual Switch. The Korean one I know is, uh, you said it's never been released as- Never been released in the Korean language. I feel like that has to be the lie. I've definitely seen like Korean Pokemon, like from like Wonder Trade or Surprise Trade. I also, feel like the, like I've seen the Joy-Con colors in the Sword and Shield bedroom change. Dang it, those both sound like lies. Wh which ones are you torn between? I, I, I think the, like the, the, t the Korean language one and the Sword and Shield Joy-Con ones, because I feel like I've seen Korean Pokemon and I feel like I've seen those Joy-Con colors change. Okay. And, and so that's why I'm, I'm stuck. What was the first fact again? I feel like I don't care about it anymore, <laughs> but... It... Uh, that Gardenia spread exists in the game files for Pokemon Emerald, next to the locations for the Frontier Brains. Okay, right. Okay, I've never heard that before. I believe it. Um, it's just the other two sound... Like, those are the ones that I feel like I have some experience with, so I feel like I need to focus on those. God, man, this is brutal. <laughs> I think I gotta go with B. I think I gotta go Pokemon games have never been released in the Korean language because I, I know I've seen Korean Pokemon. If this is something like Goofy where it was like, they weren't released, the games were like translated somehow, like that's not fair. Okay, that's illegal. Okay. And so I'm that's saying fair. B is the lie because I feel like I have seen Korean Pokemon. Are you sure? Now I'm not, thank you. But like, I I, I guess I'm sure, yeah, because I, I know I've seen Korean Pokemon. Mikey? Yes. You are correct. Finally! <laughs> They're actually all fake. What? All these are, are lies. So, what? <laughs> Every, all three of these. Why did you, why? <laughs> <laughs> you got one right. I would have gotten any of them right. <laughs> You absolute one? troll! <laughs> a. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee have a different protagonist than the original red, blue, and yellow games. However, you can still see the trainers red and blue from the red and blue games in the Let's Go games. B. Are you familiar with the Journey Across America event that they had in 2006? Very loosely. Um, I know it happened. I didn't go to it. Um, okay. I thought you did, so this might be this might be harder than I thought. In the 2006 Pokemon Journey Across America event, all entrants to the VGC event were given one of these swords. Oh, uh, is that a or Pokeball C. lightsaber? It might be. Or C, in a 2020 Japanese poll, it was found that Rayquaza is the most popular legendary Pokemon. Fact A was red and blue can be encountered in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Yes. Okay, that I know is true. Okay. I've played through those games multiple times. <laughs> um, B is the sword one. Mm-hmm. And C is... Rayquaza is the most popular Pokemon as of a Japanese poll in 2020. Most, most popular... popular legendary, legendary Okay, Pokemon, okay. Because I remember that poll, and I remember the number one being... I want to say it was Greninja. Rayquaza being the most popular legendary Pokemon sounds very legitimate. It's so cool. So I'm gonna okay. say the sword one is the lie. And my thinking behind that is when I saw it, the art of Mewtwo on it is his gen one art. It's not the updated art they made when Fire Red and Leaf Green came out. And 2006 is a like, I wanna say like two or three years after Fire Red and Leaf Green came out. So if they were gonna put Mewtwo on it, I think they would have done it differently. My guess is that Sword came from something closer to 2000. Like, cause like Phantom okay. Menace had like came out in 99. So like Star Wars stuff was jumping back up. So I'm saying the Journey Across America event is a lie 
because I think that sword predates it. That is correct. You got yes. that one right. Yes! That, do, you, do you want to guess where the sword is from? Um, uh, maybe you, the you premiere of the first movie in some places? That was close. It was a good guess. It was from the Pokemon Live event. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I, I am not. It was a play based off the Generation 1 anime where a giant robot Mewtwo is just in it. Oh, cool. And I I just found that in my closet and needed an excuse to show it in a video. And there cool. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> a, the only main series Pokemon games where you cannot catch Pikachu is Pokemon Black and White and Black and White 2. B, in the game files for Pokemon Sword and Shield, the Isle of Armor DLC was referred to as the Isle of Honor. C. Primo is the name of the character that appears in the Tichi TV in Fire Red and Leaf Green. He is the grandson of the old man in Viridian City who teaches you how to catch a Pokemon and even appears in Pokemon Hard Gold and Soul Silver where he gives you a Pokemon egg. The Primo one is correct. While I don't know every aspect of that, I know he's the Tichi TV guy. I know you can you can get multiple eggs from him. Um, if you use like secret codes, I, I utilized that when I did heart gold without catching any Pokemon to get those eggs from him. Um, I don't know if he's the grandson of the guy in Viridian City, but like that sounds legitimate. Did you remind me of the other two? Sorry. <laughs> a, the only main series Pokemon game where you can't catch a Pikachu is black and white and black and white two. And B, in the game files for Sword and Shield, the Isle of Armor DLC was called the Isle of Honor. Isle of Honor sounds legit. Um. That could just be a lie, but it sounds like it could be real. The black and white one though, that one is one I'm hung up on. I think you can catch a Pikachu in black two and white two. So like black and white are famous for like, you can't catch any previous generation Pokemon before getting the national decks um, and being the Pokemon league. Black two and white two though, that had like a significant amount of old generation Pokemon available before you uh, beat the league. I don't remember if Pikachu is one of them. All right, so black and white, I know for certain it's, you can't get a Pikachu before the league. Black two and white two, I'm trying to think of the electric types you can get. I know you can get Ampharos. I know you can get Electivire. I do think that you can't get a Pikachu. I feel like I would remember where you could find it. And so I'm gonna say the Isle of Honor is the lie. That is correct. Yes. You're three for three now, or three for six now. So you got- All right. right. That's awesome. That's Number seven. A, in Pokemon X and Y, Raichu had its speed stat changed from 100 in generation five to 110 in the new games. B, the Hoenn region is based off the southernmost part of Japan, just rotated. C, the last time the Gotta Catch Em All slogan was put on a Pokemon box was with the pre-release beta boxes for Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, which were shown off at demo kiosks at various stores in the United States and Canada. The Hoenn one is legit. Unless you're getting semantics with like, you know, <laughs> Okinawa, because Okinawa is, so Hoenn is the southernmost chunk of the main Japanese island. But then there's Okinawa further to the south, which is, which is just a small little island. So like, are you referring to the southernmost chunk of the big island or are you referring to Okinawa? This is the first I'm hearing of Okinawa existing. Okay. <laughs> if that answers your question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty small island. It's kind of like Japan's equivalent Hawaii or something like that. The gotta catch them all one sounds like, that That one is like, I'm not certain because I know they haven't used gotta catch them all for a long time. So the last time it being used, it being gen four, um, or like uh, technically before gen four because you said pre, that sounds like it could be real. Remind me of the first one. In Pokemon X and Y, Raichu had its speed stat increase from 100 to 110. Uh, I do know that Raichu got a buff at some point. I feel like that could be another like number situation where like just the numbers wrong. Like I, I remember seeing Raichu getting a buff and it's speed stat only being 100 sounds too low for Raichu. Like Wolfie VGC has talked about how useful Raichu has been because it's so fast. So I'm torn between 
that one and the gotta catch them all one, but the gotta catch them all one had just so many details. <laughs> so I'm gonna say the Raichu one is a lie because I think its buff was either in a different generation or a different amount. Is that your final answer? Yes, it is. That is incorrect. Ah! Raichu did have its speed stat change from 100 to 110 in XY. I remember that because now it has the same speed as Latios. Okay. And C is incorrect. The last time the Gotta Catch Them All slogan was used on a Pokemon box was the pre-release beta for Ruby and Sapphire, not Diamond and Pearl. All right, question number eight. There is an ability called Cacophony that is identical to the soundproof ability, however, it is unused and was never assigned to a Pokemon. B. The Pokemon Licky Licky, or Lickitung, must breed with a Mill Tank in order to get the egg move for rollout. C. Gardevoir's Japanese name, translated to English, means Sir Knight. The Cacophony one, the first one, that's real. I made a video about Pokemon abilities you've never heard of a few years ago, and Cacophony is written out in the thumbnail. <laughs> um, okay. I've, I've watched a chunk of Pokemon anime uh, with subtitles, um, and they definitely refer to Gardevoir, Gardevoir as Sir Knight. And so I think the Licky Licky Mill Tank one is the lie. That was some good deductive reasoning there. You are correct. All right. Yes. I thought you'd be hung up on Gardevoir thinking I meant Gallade because Sir Knight fits more with Gallade. Yes, it definitely does. So I thought I thought you were going to, th I thought I was going to get you on that one, but you didn't bite. What is the, what is the real, like, equivalent of the Mill Tank Licky Licky one? Oh, that one I just made up because I didn't know, like, Mill Tank. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, doesn't <laughs> Lickitung have to know Rollout to evolve into Licky Licky? Uh, it might, it's either Rollout or Ancient Power. I don't know. All right, so now we are on question nine. Only two, I do have a bonus one, though, if you want to answer that to redeem yourself, but question okay. nine. A, in Pokemon Coliseum, the evil leader of Team Snagum is named Gorzip. B, shorts are comfy and easy to wear. C, in the Generation 1 Pokemon games, you can evolve Star You into Star Me without needing a Water Stone. So A is the lie. I've played Coliseum and XD multiple times. The leader of Team Snagum's name is Gonzap, not yep, Gorzip. But I want to hear about this star me, star you one, because that is not a fact I've heard before. Okay, so there is a glitch in the Generation 1 Pokemon games where you can evolve Pokemon that need a stone evolution without a stone. If you enter a battle against a trainer with that Pokemon, and the trainer has a specific Pokemon, so in the case for Staryu, if the tra enemy trainer has a Onix, and Staryu knocks out the Onix, and then Staryu remains in the battle until the entire trainer battle is over, and levels up, the star you will evolve. Huh. You ready for the last question? Yes, I am. A, every region features some sort of cafe or restaurants. B, much like how the Santaloon Forest in Pokemon X and Y is nearly identical to the Viridian Forest from the original Generation 1 games, the Lost Lorne Forest in Pokemon Black and White 2 is nearly identical to the Elex Forest in Gold and Silver. C, Pokemon Emerald has two game corners in it. Every region features some sort of cafe or restaurant. I'm trying to think through the regions. <laughs> and like- And I mean main series regions only. So yeah, I figured like the, you did. The ranger regions or whatever. Yeah, so like, there, there are certain instances where I can think of immediately, like those definitely have one. So like gen four in like the resort area by Lake Valor, that, that one, mm -hmm. Gen, you know, Unova, um, Unova's one I, I haven't thought of. Oh wait, Unova's the, the Strident Gym with Silent Chili and Crest, that's a restaurant. Kalos, yeah. they've got them freaking everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. Alola, there's like a couple different restaurants. I don't, like there's one in like Mali City. I remember like Nanu will like buy your dinner occasionally. Um, and then, Galler, there is the like cafes where you can get like the sweets to evolve all creamy. Um, the first three though, Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn, 
I don't, I'm not immediately thinking of them. And so that is making it tricky for me to know for certain. B, much like how the Santa Loon Forest, okay, yes, that is, uh, the Lost Lorne Forest in Black and White 2 is nearly identical to the Ilex Forest. I'm having a lot of trouble remembering <laughs> where the hell the Lost Lorne Forest is. It's in the like southeastern corner. So in Black and White 1, it's towards the start of the game. In Black and White 2, it's, I believe it might even be post game in Black and White 2 or towards the very end of the game. It is? Because in like in Black and, so in Black and White, it's at the beginning of the game? I, I think it's right after Lenora's gym. That's Pinwheel Forest. No, well, I meant the Lost Lorne Forest. The question still stands. I think I'm just getting them too mixed up. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to remember. Where the hell is that forest? It's east of Nimbasa City. There's like a little cove you can go in. It's an optional route. And you have the Lost Lorne Forest. Okay, that's what I thought it might be. I think that's the lie. And that, my, okay, hold continue. on. My reasoning is that every region features some sort of cafe or restaurant. I feel like they, those do exist in the, um, the like Kanto Johto Hoenn. I just can't think of their like specifics. Pokemon Emerald having two game corners. I think that could be real because of the Battle Frontier. I think there could be one in the Battle Frontier that I'm just like not really remembering. But the Lost Lorn Forest, to me, I, I it's just like a big open area. Um, Ilex Forest is more of a maze, like Viridian Forest is. Whereas the Lost Lorn Forest, it's like. There's like a little bit of grass. There's like that river you walk over and there's a waterfall. And then there's just a big open area. So I think B is the lie. Mikey, you are correct. Yes. That is the lie. All right. So, you went... so for the Emerald having two game corners, there's actually one in um, Moss Deep City. If you have an e-reader, you can enter another Pokemon game corner. Oh. And you can link up with the game corner on Two Island in Fire Red and Leaf Green to play some mini games. Oh, that's interesting. And then for the restaurants in Generation One, there's one in Celadon City where you get the coin case. In, oh yeah. In Johto, there's one in Olivine City by the lighthouse. Yeah, I don't and remember that one, Mar but I believe you. And then in Generation Three, uh, that one's a little bit tricky because there's the home one that you see in Omega V Alpha Sapphire which does have restaurants in Mallville City, the new Mallville City. Ah, okay. Cool. So you went six for 10. I do have a bonus question if you want to redeem yourself. Okay. Okay, so this one is it's pretty straightforward. It's not a trick, trust me. A, another NPC in black and white north of Marlin's gym says shorts are comfy and easy to wear. B, when transferring over Pokemon from red and blue into gold and silver, they can sometimes hold an item in the Generation 2 game that they obviously wouldn't have had in red and blue. C. At the 2006 Pokemon National Tournament held in Bryant Park, New York City, Hulk Hogan was there as a host. An NPC north of Marlin's gym repeats shorts are comfy and easy to wear. What was B again? When you transfer over a Pokemon from red and blue into gold and silver with the time capsule thing, Mm -hmm. They can sometimes be holding an item that they weren't holding because you can't have items in red and blue. And then C is Hulk Hogan was at the Nationals tournament. Yes. All of those sound like they could be real. I'm going to say A is the lie. The one about the shorts being comfy and easy to wear. I definitely feel like there is an NPC elsewhere that says that. I feel like it would be a youngster that says it. And that late in the game... With, like north of Marlin's gym, you're not really gonna see a youngster there. At least I don't think. I could be wrong, of course. Hulk Hogan being at the 2006 Nationals, I want that to be true, because that's fun. <laughs> and then a Pokemon holding an item it wasn't holding, that sounds like a very, very possible Gen 1, Gen 2 type glitch. So I'm saying A about the shorts line is the lie. That is correct. Yes! There is an NPC there who says something similar though. 
It's a girl who says, I like dresses. They're comfy and easy to wear. Ah. So you went six for 10 and you got the bonus. So we'll give you a seven for 10. That's pretty good. All right. So thank you, Mikey. Of course. Um, I'll leave his link in the description. As you know, I always love to help out smaller YouTubers. <laughs> Thank Anything you. else your, you want to say your, at the end? Uh, your charity is appreciated. <laughs> uh, make sure you subscribe to Papa C for great videos. My good sir, thank you for having me. And that is it.